Hello everyone and welcome to What's Happening with Kids and Teens on the Island. I'm your host, Ashley Marie Davis. Tonight, I have the pleasure of interviewing Anthony Peretti. Anthony performed an act of kindness in honor of his best friend, Dylan. Anthony is turning 11 years old this month and he is here tonight to tell us his story. So hi, Anthony, and hi. welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course, thank you for being here. You having fun so far? Yeah. <laughs> we love that. So Anthony, tell us a little bit about your friendship with Dylan, when you became friends with him, and how you guys met. I've been friends with Dylan since kindergarten, so it's been six years I've been friends with Dylan. And ever since, me and Dylan, we've been stuck together like glue. Aww. We always <laughs> play together. Um, we were on the same football team. We won the championship recently. Nice. And Congratulations. Thank you. And ever since kindergarten, we've always been best friends. I love that. It's so nice to have best friends that you've grown up with from childhood to now. So I'm sure you guys will be friends forever, it yeah. sounds like. So tell us a little bit, actually, what happened to Dylan and what did you do to support him? So Dylan, basically, he has alopecia, and it's a genetic disease that makes you lose your hair. Okay. So I remember in the third grade, Dylan start, started to get, like, bald spots and, like, bald patches. And then, basically, over time, his hair started to come out more and more. And basically, during football one day, before one of our games, I was one of, like, the first kids that he showed that he shaved his head. Mm -hmm. And that's really what happened to Dylan. How did he feel when that was happening and how did you support him? So Dylan, he always stayed the same though the entire time. The way I supported him though was by me shaving my head for him this year. <laughs> What's up, Dill? Uh, it's all right not to have hair, it doesn't matter. It's just hair, <laughs> oh no. All right, well, I love you, bro. I'm doing it for you. Right. I love you. Wow, that is so, so nice of you. And I'm sure he felt so honored and, and happy that you helped him like that. Yeah. How did he feel when you did that? Dylan felt happy. I remember the day. So I walked into the school building I went into the gym where we all were standing to go get ready to go to class. And I remember I went up to Dylan, I said what I said, I took my hat off, and basically his face went like this. He was so happy, and I remember that the second I took my hat off, he went like that and he gave me a big hug. That is so heartwarming, and I'm sure he felt like, wow, Anthony really has my back. We're best friends, and he's just trying to make me feel feel good, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's going through something like this, and you were there to support him. So that's so nice of you, and you should be very proud of yourself because not many people can say that they've done that. So hats off to you. It's very nice. Why did you do it for Dylan? What made you go home that day and say, I'm going to go do this? So... Since I've been best friends with Dylan, I've always actually wanted to shave my head for Dylan ever since the third grade. And one day, I remember from coming back from school, it was a Tuesday night, I told my mom I want to shave my head for Dylan since it was coming up, it was September, and Dylan had alopecia day, I think, the day after. Mm -hmm. So I shaved my head for him like two days before. So it made me happy for him because since he's my best friend, I wanted to do it for him. Tell us a little bit about this special award that you won and how, how did it all happen? Tell us how you won this award. Okay. So I won the award by shaving my head for Dylan, obviously. And so it was a regular day of school. Me and Dylan were both in class. I was in science. He was in his regular classroom. And basically, we both got called down to the main lobby where his mom was there, my mom was there too, and my grandma, and the Councilman Ry Borelli, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> and, and basically, he took us to the side, 
and he told us why we got the award for having a kind act against each other. And he gave us both one award each. Wow. And were you shocked? Were you so surprised? Yeah, because it was just a regular <laughs> day in school and I didn't know where we both get awards. Oh, wow. Did, were you nervous at first that you both got called down to the main yeah. lobby at the same time? <laughs> I'm sure you guys both looked at each other like, uh-oh, what's yeah. happening? What did we do? <laughs> that goes to show that people throughout our community have heard about this act of kindness and they know all of the good that you're doing for your friend Dylan and others in the community and look, your hard work paid off and you got an award for that and they recognize that throughout our community. So you should be very proud of that. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about what you plan on doing in September. I know you mentioned it a little bit, but maybe tell us how else you're going to raise awareness for this with Dylan. So this September, I most likely shave my head again, obviously. Right. Um, really just shave my head again do what I did for Dylan, be best friends for the rest of the school year and everything like that. Oh, that's so nice. Well, we'd love to hear that. How can you encourage others to be kind in the way that you perform this act of kindness for your best friend? How can you encourage others to do that? Basically, to be kind to others, to encourage it, is to like be like lighten up more to people. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, some people always think like to judge somebody before they know them. Mm -hmm. Like, don't judge a book by their cover, because mm -hmm. you never know what they're going through. Yeah. So I think if you just talk to them and get to know them, then it'll help you understand what they've been through, who they are, and basically you'll start to know them and get really close friends. I love that. That is so true, and you can carry that with you for the rest of your life because you never know what other people are going through behind closed doors, and it's always, always better to be kind and, and lend a helping hand than judge anybody. So I couldn't agree more with that. That's very knowledgeable of you to say that. So do you believe in this instance, does kindness, can, can it change the way a person feels about themselves? Yes. And why? Why do you think that? Because ever since I shaved my head for Dylan, and our friendship's been stronger than ever. Like, basically, it just, you just feel great inside. You feel close. Yeah. You feel close with him. And I'm sure, you know, he would do the same for you, or anything for you. So you guys always have each other's back no matter what. And that's a beautiful thing, to have that with a friend. Tell me a little bit about what do you want to do when you grow up? I know that's such a broad question, and I'm sure it's going to change, because I know for me it's changed over the years. But what do you see yourself doing in, in 10 years, let's say? I have a lot of options. But <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> um, a couple of my most I like the most is trying to go to the NFL. OK. Being a construction worker. OK, love and that. An engineer. Wow, okay, so you have a lot of goals, a lot of goals, and that's great. How do you think that you're gonna get to that goal, or any of those goals? How do you think you're gonna achieve it? I gotta keep working hard in school and football, and hopefully one of those days I'll pay off, and I'll have one of those two, three jobs that I want when I get older. <laughs> I'm sure you will, and I'm sure you're going to be extremely successful in anything that you do. What does Dylan want to do when he gets older? Dylan, I honestly don't know. <laughs> he loves doing everything. Like. Everything, okay, I love that. And I'm sure you guys will be best friends forever. And I know, just I don't even know him, but I'm just speaking to you today. I'm sure he's incredibly grateful for how much you have you know, supported him throughout his journey with this. And you're raising awareness, not only on this show tonight, but you're raising awareness for kids in school. So that way, you know, they don't judge a book by its cover and you can continue to support him every step of the way. So that's a wonderful thing. And you should be very, very proud of yourself for that. Anything that else you wanna add? What's a message that maybe you want to give people watching at home? Maybe something along the lines of how they can perform an act of kindness. 
Um, how you could perform an act of kindness is like Dylan on like suggestion. Dylan had alopecia and he used to get bullied and I've always wanted to shave my head for him. So I did an act of kindness by shaving my head for him. And like you could do it for anybody. Like say if your friend's different in a way, you could like say if your mom likes cooking and you don't like cooking, you could help her with cooking sometimes. Or like do fun things with her that she likes. Yeah, and make sacrifices or try something new or step out of your comfort zone yeah. to make somebody else feel good and, and feel loved and feel supported. So that's great advice. And again, you should be so, so proud of yourself. And I know mom is, I know she's cheering you on today. And I'm sure, you know, Dylan is incredibly grateful. So anybody that's watching, take it from Anthony, it is, it takes so little to perform an act of kindness and it makes everybody feel good. So thank you so much. That was really wonderful that you shared that with us today. Thank you for having me. Of course. So to end the show, being kind to someone can make such a difference in someone's life as we've heard today. Let's think about how you can make someone smile today and perform an act of kindness. Did, some, did you help someone today? Did you tell somebody that you love them or that they're supported and you have their back the way that Anthony has Dylan's back? So let's ask, our, ask ourselves that and make sure that we are performing acts of kindness in our everyday lives. So Anthony, again, thank you so much for being on the show. It was so wonderful to get to interview you and learn a little bit more about your friendship with Dylan and what you're going to do in September. I hope I can follow you or mom on social <laughs> media if you guys take pictures and continue to raise awareness for this and any other causes that you know you hold close to your heart. And I'm very grateful that we were able to talk today. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my second guest tonight is Layla Zakharova. Layla is a boxing champion, a national junior Olympic champion, USA national silver, silver gloves champion, and so much more. So hi, Layla, and welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course. So happy for you to be here. So to kick things off, I wanted to ask you, what is the first thing that we should know that got you interested in boxing, and how old were you? So what got me interested is that, first of all, my dad's the coach. So he'd always bring me to the gym and stuff. And um, I started when I was five, and he just put me in there for like self-defense. He'd always try to get, get me into the gym. But um, I was a little shy when I was little, so I'd always hide behind my mom. <laughs> but when I was five, I'm like, OK, I'll try it. So that's how it all started. Nice. How many national titles have you won since you started? Uh, I have 10 right now, 10 national titles. Wow. Is yeah. there a specific one that holds a special place for you? Um, or are they all special in their own way? They're all special, yeah. but one that really sticks out to me is the 2021 nationals. Um, that's when I had, when I got my award. Nice. And uh, I had like three fights for that, so that was like the most I ever fought. Wow. Like in the competition. Do you ever get nervous? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the nerves kick in a little bit, but that's like <laughs> normal. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about where you won your first title. My first title, um, it wasn't at nationals. It was a state. So that was like my first fight. I was about like maybe nine, nine and a half. Mm -hmm. um, I fought in New York, fought in Brooklyn, and um, I got my first belt, and it was pink. <laughs> so <laughs> We love that. Yes. Um, that was my first fight, and honestly, I didn't even realize what I was doing. No. So, and then when I got into the ring, I won, you know, and I just like the excitement and everything, the feelings, the adrenaline, like rushing through your veins, like it's just, it's a different feeling. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. And I can imagine how much preparation goes into yeah. something like that, not only physically, but also your mindset. You have to be in a clear headspace to Definitely. do something like that. So tell us a little bit about how you prepare for a fight? So preparation, I train seven days a week, you know, uh, 
two to three groups. That's like maybe three hours or so every single day. Wow. Um, I do that for about like maybe two months before competition, two to three months. Wow. Is there anything that you do for fun to get you pumped up? Because I know from dance competitions and pageants, I used to try to put on like my favorite music backstage yeah. and just calm my nerves and just block everything out. Do you do that also? Or is um, it a little different? I mean, it's a little different. Yeah. Like before the fight, I guess we kind of like just have a game plan, like me mm -hmm. and my dad, and I just keep like overseeing it over and over in my head. Mm -hmm. And I just like evaluate it, like see how I will do it in the ring. Right. And I just go and do my job. <laughs> you go in there and you do what you have to yeah, do. Yeah, I do what I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is great. So aside from boxing, cause I, it sounds like you have a really busy schedule and mm -hmm. there's a lot of training that goes into it to get you ready for a fight. What's something that you do outside of boxing that you would like others to know? Um, I like skiing. Wow. Like, oh, yeah, with my family we ski. Um, I like playing volleyball okay. with my friends. Um, and I go fishing with my dad. Nice. Where yeah. do you go fishing? At Great Kills. Oh, so yeah. nice. That's great. It sounds like you're very close with your dad mm -hmm. and your mom is here today yes. watching <laughs> you, cheering you on. <laughs> do you, um, do they come to every single fight and, and watch you? Well, my dad's my coach, so right. he goes, he's in yes. my corner all he's the time. He's in your corner. <laughs> my, mom, my mom always watches from at home, like if it's live, like she always watches, she watches like this <laughs> through her fingers. <laughs> she tells me she gets really, really nervous, but she watches. Do you have a lot of friends in, you know, the, the league that you're in and, and do you make a lot of friends with other, I guess, competitors at the same time? Do you meet a lot of people yeah, yeah, while no. you do this? Yeah, no, um, I feel like they understand me very well because yeah. we're in the same like kind of background mm -hmm. and everything. Like, you know, it's real, it's, it's hard work. Yeah. And they understand like what we go through. Right. So I feel like um, it's really easy to find a connection yeah. with them. Do you have any siblings? Yes. Do they want to do this also? Yes, they're in boxing already. I oh, have a wow. Old brother. Oh, He's my goodness. Boxing. And your dad coaches him too. Yep. <laughs> I love it. So it runs in the family. Yep. This is great. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you have any favorite fighters? Um, well, obviously, the greatest, Muhammad Ali. Right. Uh, I like Canelo. Okay. I like uh, Javante Davis. He's really good. Um, Lomachenko, his footwork is just phenomenal. Nice. I love that. We always have to find people to look up to yeah. and, you know, positive role models. And I think you're such a positive role model, not only for young, you know, students and people that are looking to get into something like this, but for girls, you know, for young girls, yeah. I think self-defense is needed. Yes. Definitely. And <laughs> it's always good to know, you know, how to defend yourself in the world. And I think, uh, just the preparation alone, it, it, you know, it shows how much of a well-rounded person you are. So this is wonderful. Where would you like to see yourself in the future, whether that be with boxing or anything, career-wise? Well, career-wise? Yeah. Hopefully uh, in the Olympics, okay. the 2028 ones in Los Angeles. Nice. Um, representing Team USA, of, of course. course. <laughs> <laughs> and winning that gold. Nice. And what are you doing to prepare for that goal? 
Is there anything different that you would be doing to prepare for something like that? Well, now that I'm on the team, mm -hmm. you know, I have uh, Worlds in November. Okay. So I'm going there. Uh, I have camp again in September, and then I go back in November for another two weeks, and then we go to the competition. So just keep winning nationals in order to get on that team and just stick with that goal. Has there ever been a time where you didn't win a fight, and how do you handle that? Yeah, so um, the first time I like lost my first fight, like it, it, was, it was pretty pretty bad. It was a sad moment, but yeah. you know, you go through it. It's everybody goes through mm -hmm. it. It's, it's normal, um, but you can't really do anything about it. All you can do is thank God that he kept you safe in that ring. Right. And on to the next, you work yeah. harder and you show everybody what you're capable of. Yeah, no, that's, it's so true. And you're not always going to win everything yeah. every time in life. So it's important to learn from these things mm -hmm. and challenge yourself and yes. you'll continue to push yourself as you continue on with these fights. So it's a great life lesson, not just in, the, in sports, but overall. So you're doing amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're proud of you on Staten Island. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about this award here and how you won it. And tell us a little bit about the fight that you won it in. Okay, so I got this Outstanding Female Boxer Junior Division Award. So basically for this, I had to go through uh, three fights. This was the one that I was talking about, the 2021 yes, National yes. Championship. This is what stands out to me because I won this award. And um, it was really hard because I also had my hand broken oh, at that time. So I was going through recovery for that. And uh, I won three fights with it. So, and UC Boxing saw that. So, yeah. Amazing, I love that. Is there another award that maybe you didn't bring here today that you also really like, it, it holds a special place in your heart that's super memorable? Just my belts. Your belts. Yeah. <laughs> How many belts do you have? Um, maybe like six. Wow. Seven. Wow. And are they all by different ranking? How does it work? Uh, they're all the same for all like the same. everybody. Yeah. For all the national champions, like you get a belt. Um, I have like three that are uh, silver gloves. Nice. Four, four silver gloves belts. Wow. So they're kind of like the same style, but. Um, it's a little, it's a little different because they change it every single year. Mm -hmm. And then I have three that are um, USA Boxing. Wow. So that's like official USA Boxing national belts. Wow. So I have two in white and um, one in red. Nice. So yeah, and then everything else is just like trophies and stuff. Amazing. This is wonderful. What would be the next award that you would be eligible to win for another fight? Uh, hopefully this again, Another. but instead okay. of junior, I'd uh, be in youth. Okay. So youth outstanding boxer, because uh, I go in the age category. Nice. Youth. Tell us a little bit about equipment or like gear that you have to wear to um, get yourself prepared for a fight. So I have to wear a headgear, okay. mouthpiece. Um, I have to put my hair up, so I have to wear like a specific like sport hat to put okay. my hair up. Um, gloves, which they provide for us, um, my hands have to be wrapped with like gauze and tape. So uh, before we start sparring, we always wrap our hands to keep the boxers safe. And it's very important to wrap your hands in the correct way to make sure nothing breaks or anything because it's such a physical sport. So I have these that I just slip on for extra protection. And then you just wrap around it. Just like so. And then you go through the fingers. Keep the knuckles nice and safe. Then around the thumb. One more time and then around your wrist. There you have it, all ready. Now you just put the glove on. Okay.
That's awesome. I mean, it probably took you some time to learn how to do all of that because yeah. I can only imagine. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I remember with dance, I would have to, with like point in uh, LaGuardia for high school, it was so difficult to like set up point shoes and mm -hmm. break them in and it's a whole process for any sport. So yeah. I can only imagine, probably took you time to get that down to yeah. a science. Yes. <laughs> I love that. And I'm sure your dad has helped you every step of the way. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. It's wonderful to have a very good support system yes. in things like that. So you're very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is I guess a misconception, do you get, are there any stereotypes I should say in boxing for women versus men? That men are stronger than girls? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I spar, I spar boys all the time. I'm not <laughs> in my gym, I spar boys. So <laughs> that's what every other girl does yeah. like when they're preparing. Yeah. Because there's not a lot of girls in the sport. So right. we fight men. Right. Oh, wow, you do? Yeah, I do. Oh, wow. Tell us about that. Are you ever... Are you nervous? Are you are no. you just like no? I'm I'm good. I'm used yeah, to no, this. I'm good. I'm used to it. I've been yeah. been doing it since I was little. I've yeah. been fighting boys, so yeah. it's nothing new. It's just it. And for a lot of girls who do compete like me, like they fight boys. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That I mean, what a boy can do, a girl can do. So exactly, <laughs> we can all do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you know, it's great to see that there's so many you know young. Uh, young people today that are doing this mm -hmm. and it's not something that for me when I was growing up I, I didn't have any friends that did anything like this and now you're seeing so many different types of sports evolve so I think it's great that you know you can also maybe one day teach boxing yes. or train younger people the way that your dad trained you so mm -hmm. I think that is amazing and you give back that way by showing your skills to other people yeah that's wonderful Aside from boxing, what's a fun fact that you want to share with us about you? Um, I draw really good. Ooh. Yeah. Do you do that like as like your to calm your nerves? Yeah, sometimes yeah. I do. But when I was little, like I used to take drawing classes. Okay. And I, I have some paintings that are like really, really good. Oh wow! Yeah. So we have a boxer and an artist. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I love sharing people's hidden talents because. You just sometimes you'd never know. Yeah. You'd never know unless you <laughs> ask. <laughs> but thank you so much for being on the show. Is there anything that you'd like to tell the audience at home watching uh, a little bit about, you know, what you have coming up next or just anything that you want to share? Um, I think I covered it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having we me. wish you the best of luck and we know that you will make Team USA proud, and we will see you at the Olympics, and I know you'll continue to do great things. So thank you so much for being thank on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>